Yo, what's going on, Kicks Army? Today I'm doing a sneaker drawing on the Air Jordan 5 International Flight that's set to release this August 25th, as well as discussing about some of the comments CJ McCollum has made recently. Let's get it! Now don't forget, this stencil along with many others are available over my website kicksart.com. All the stencils on the website are free and I actually uploaded three new stencils to the site today. I added the Off-White Vapor Max as well as the Kyrie 1 and the Kyrie 2. Now if you like what I'm doing with the channel as well as what I'm doing with the website, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bounce past that bell to get post notifications. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is the Air Jordan 5 International Flight which is going to release on the 25th of this month. Now this particular colorway was inspired by the game that Michael Jordan played in Barcelona, Spain when he was a part of the Dream Team. And the interesting design on the side mesh is inspired by some of the Barcelona street art. And the retail price for these sneakers are 190 bucks. Now I'm pretty sure I've been saying this in almost every single video, but you guys already know, ain't no way I'm copping these sneakers. Ain't nobody got money for that. But I do personally like that weird interesting design on the side panel. It's definitely got that 90s vibe and back in the day when I first started becoming sneaker head I wanted all of my sneakers to be like very plain spaghetti I didn't like anything too crazy going on but over the years and I guess it makes sense because I've really been like in tune with the arts because I'm now like an officially an art student I'll be graduating in less than a year um, I like it when sneakers do weird interesting unusual things which is why I love the off-white sneakers how they have that text on the side that's so random I think is really cool now, as for the drawing itself I do have a very big critique on what I did when you look at images of the sneaker the upper looks like it almost has a very faint yellow color which I'm guessing they're calling sale as according to the color naming of it and I was using a Prismacolor marker that I thought was going to be able to give off that effect well but unfortunately I guess because of the kind of paper I was using it didn't really come out too well. I try to stay away from shoes that have a lot of white in them because naturally with the markers that I use and because I'm using white paper it's going to look like not much is going on. Obviously I have like my really light grays which I can use to kind of help blend the edges of the section so that way it shows a little bit of depth. But in this particular shoe, the grays wouldn't really work because it's not really the color of the upper. And I didn't really have another marker that would be able to give off that same color without overdoing it. So sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. It's what happens. But at least the rest of it came out pretty cool, so that's what matters. Now, recently CJ McCollum appeared on CCTV, which is a Chinese news network to which he was asked questions about super teams and players joining super teams and he had some pretty critical remarks to them. So for starters, he was asked about the whole super team dynamic and he said, I would never do anything of that nature. I think it's disgusting. And as we talked about before, CJ has been in the news recently because he has his podcast to which Kevin Durant was on recently. They were kind of talking about the whole super team dynamic and Kevin Durant was kind of roasting him saying, well, what do you think you guys are going to win anyway? Obviously you're not and stuff like that. Afterwards, CJ kind of replied to another fan on Twitter kind of like igniting this whole beef and then this whole thing kind of got blown out of proportion. He is very much aware of all of this so the fact that he used the word disgusting and that's a pretty strong word especially when you use it in this kind of context is pretty notable. Like supposedly him and Kevin Durant are not cool, this whole little beef thing is squash, it's no big deal. But the fact that he keeps kind of bringing up these things and he's using very choice words here, I think is slowly adding more fuel back to this fire. At least in the eyes of the media it is. And like I said, that word alone is pretty powerful, especially when you use it with your contemporaries. So yeah, I would say this fire is getting lit right now. Now, he was also asked if super teams are the future of the NBA, to which he replied, I think some players will take that route, but most guys have too much pride. They want to really win on their own and in their certain organizations and aren't just going to jump the bandwagon. Again, CJ is a very intelligent person. He knows what's being talked about in the media. So when he uses the word bandwagon, it's a very choice word once again. Now, for the record, I'm not disagreeing with anything of what CJ is saying. I just find it very interesting that he is one of the main players that we've seen really kind of take a stance on this whole super team dilemma. Because when we talk about super teams, we're really just talking about the Warriors here, since they're the one who also added Boogie Cousins during the offseason. We all know CJ is extremely bitter about this. He plays in Portland. Last season, they were the third seed out in the West, the tough, difficult Western Conference. They were the third seed. They did amazing. And they had a tough run in with the Pelicans and unfortunately the Pelicans kind of blew them out in four games. So you would think it would be difficult to go up against the Warriors, but the fact that they lost to another team, they didn't even take a game off another team, and the fact that the Warriors keep stacking the deck probably really makes them very, very upset to say the least. And I believe in my heart of hearts, CJ is a very honorable man. I don't believe in any circumstance he would want to go to chase rings by joining other all-star level players to form a super team that would make the competitive balance in the league very uneven. He mentioned on that podcast episode 
episode where Kevin Durant was on that he felt like they had a chance of getting DeMarcus Cousins. And even though Boogie Cousins won't be back until March or so of next year, the fact that they could have had him definitely would have been an asset to the team, especially when the playoffs would have rolled around. So when a player of DeMarcus Cousins caliber doesn't choose to go to Portland, even though I don't think that was really on the table, but the possibility was there, when he doesn't choose to go to Portland, he chooses to go to the Warriors, it makes that deck that was already stacked even more stacked and it makes their chances of winning even less. Just over the course of an off season, like the season hasn't even started and he can already feel like, man, this season is going to suck for us. And it's not like it's his fault, it's not like it's Lillard's fault, it's just the nature of the situation that they're dealing with. Like, how many top free agents do you think are going to be itching to go to Portland next season? I don't think I can think of one. And if there is a free agent that would want to go to Portland, it would definitely be a shock. He knows this, he's well aware of this, and he's upset the fact that if they weren't as stacked as they were, right, we're talking about this one team, the Warriors, if they weren't as stacked as they were, the competitive balance would be, you know, kind of shifted around the league, a lot of good players would be on a lot of different teams, and it wouldn't be so one-sided. So even if they were able to advance in the playoffs, make it past whatever team they were able to go up against the Warriors, it would be much more difficult this season as opposed to last season, and last season would have been difficult to begin with and they didn't even get to play them last season. I'm sure a number of players and teams have the same frustration. Now, there are a few teams who might not be as worried about the Warriors. Like, I'm sure the Celtics are going at it like, ooh, I can't wait to play the Warriors, right? Because they have a legitimate team to go up against them. You could say the same about the Rockets, potentially the Lakers, because they got Braun. We're gonna have to really see how that goes. I'm sure Philly might feel in the same way as well. Basically, any team that comes out of the East is gonna feel that way. Like, okay, it don't matter who's coming out. I don't care if it's the Warriors, we're gonna put them to work. But when you're Portland and you're pretty much set up to not really get too much better over the next few seasons and you have to deal with this dynasty that keeps getting better, yeah, I'm sure it is discouraging and it's very interesting to see him use his platform to kind of make light of how he feels about it. Like, yes, he's getting paid millions of dollars. Whoever has his last name for generations to come will be taken care of, right? He did his job. He made sure his family will be financially safe. But he also loves his job, he loves the sport of basketball, and he hates knowing that his success is going to be limited by a number of teams just completely out-talenting everybody else based off of their own decisions. It's not like a trade was made between New Orleans and the Warriors where it's like, okay, uh, we'll trade you Boogie Cousins in exchange, give us $2 million, JaVale McGee, and a milkshake and we'll be good. Like, no, he left and he went there. And the fact that he might not show up until March makes this whole situation a little better to stomach, but it still really sucks because the fact is he is on that team and he is a damn good player. Now, CJ McCollum, listen, I know you watch my videos, bro. So this is gonna be you and me talking one-to-one -one here. I appreciate you putting your feelings out there, really making your voice known, but at the end of the day, there is really not much you can do here. What you can do is to continue to work on your game, continue to excel your skills so that way you can become a much better player than you already are, continue to help propel your teammates, make sure they're in the gym every single day to work very hard. And at the end of the day, you have to understand that it's gonna be your management and ownership that is gonna dictate the course of your guys' future. All you can control is your skill. They're gonna be the ones that are gonna have to make moves to get players to come or to reconfigure the team. And CJ, I'm telling you, bro, it could always be worse. You could be playing for the Magic. Hey, no, for OCJ, if you want to come join the Magic, you can easily be the starting two guard, or if you want, you can run the point. I'm fine with that. You got my blessing, bro. I'm telling you. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and bounce past the bell to get post notifications. Don't forget to check out kickstart.com for our sneaker sense of needs, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yee!